Hi, dear learner. Uh, so today I am starting my discussion with the pressure variation with depth. Uh, at this point, we have stopped the uh, last, uh, you know, class because of some technical error. So today I am going to cover that. Uh, so, uh, pressure variation with depth, if we are going to measure, we have to uh, make use of uh, the hydrostatic law. So, hydrostatic law basically states that change of pressure with height is directly proportional to the specific weight of uh, liquid. So, uh, let us consider uh, uh, container which is here, right? Uh, so, container is filled with water. So, if we draw the pressure variation, it will be looking like a triangular one. So, as we are, this is a free surface of water. So, at free surface of water, pressure will be zero. As we are going towards uh, the bottom, pressure will keep on increasing linearly. Uh, so, from the hydrostatic law directly we can get, uh, if you integrate dou P is equal to rho Z into dz, if you integrate that, you will get rho Z times of z. z is the vertical height. Now, depending on the direction in which you are going, a pressure will be positive or negative. Alright, so if you are going towards uh, the center of earth, if you are going towards down where gravity is, uh, you know, uh, increasing, then we will be writing pressure is equal to plus rho gh. If we are going up, right, uh, where our gravity is decreasing, uh, where pressure will be negative. So, negative sign will be, uh, uh, will be uh, considered as pressure decreasing when we are going up. Positive means when pressure is increasing when we are going down. Alright. So, that is why this second equation when the variation of density with the elevation is known, we can write minus rho g dh. So, this pressure is basically when measuring the pressure uh, in the direction of where gravity is decreasing. That means, when we are measuring pressure while, while we are going away from the center of earth, our pressure will be minus rho g h. So, this is a very simple, you know, uh, equation that can be used to find out the uh, pressure variation. So, so, again, uh, if somebody asks you what is the absolute pressure, then you have to add this pressure value of rho g s with the atmospheric pressure because we know the absolute pressure is defined as a pressure which is measured with respect to the uh, atmospheric pressure. So, we are going above the atmospheric pressure, uh, our pressure will be called uh, positive pressure, right? Risk of gauge pressure. If you are going down, it will be negative pressure or you can see the vacuum pressure. Uh, so, if we go to the next uh, manometer, manometer is a device uh, that is used for measuring the pressure at a point or at two different locations, right? So, there are two kind of manometers, one is called single point manometer which will measure the static pressure at a single point. So, this first diagram is representing the simple uh, YouTube manometer, right, in which one end is fixed to the, uh, you know, system where we want to measure the pressure and second end is open to the atmosphere, right? So, uh, this basically will give you the pressure at a single point. So, if I want to measure the pressure of a gas, right, if I open the valve and gas, uh, I will allow the gas to flow and in this YouTube, uh, basically one manometric fluid will be filled. Usually, we use the mercury, water, or alcohol as well as oil can also be used. So, the moment I open the valve, right, my gas will flow which will cause the mercury or manometric whatever fluid we are using to raise in the YouTube. The height by which your fluid is getting expanded, right, uh, that will be called as uh, datum and while using that datum, I can find out the pressure, etc. by the gas. Alright, so this is a very simple equation, so I can write P2 is equal to P atmospheric plus rho g s. Why I am saying P atmospheric? Because this is a free end where pressure will be acting downward, right, uh, pressure always acts perpendicular to the surface. So, P2 can be written as when if I want to pressure here at bottom, right, uh, this is uh, this is my dotted line is a reference line. So, I am I am measuring pressure here. So, I can say P2 is equal to P atmospheric plus this much height, uh, this liquid will also be uh, giving some pressure on the uh, reference point too. So, so, P2 is P atmospheric plus rho gh. Uh, this second one is called differential manometer which will measure the pressure difference between two different locations. So, in this diagram if you look at point 1 and point 2, these are the two different locations where YouTube manometer is attached. Right, so when uh, we now now we have to look at the reference junction, right? So this this uh, pink color, right? This this is my manometric fluid, which is which is filled here, and flow is taking from place from the left to the right side, right, in this pipe. And at two different locations, I have attached this, right? If you look at uh, this uh, pink uh, manometric fluid, right? This is the you know 
a uh, point where uh, the, the this liquid which was flowing in the pipe is meeting with the uh, manometric fluid so this is my reference junction so ab can be considered a and b will be considered as a reference so with respect to this reference line i can write the equation of pressure so if i want to write the pressure equation uh, at this point i can say p1 plus uh, this rho1 rho1 is the density of the uh, you know medium which is flowing through the pipe so rho1 into z and the total height up to point a from this baseline is a plus h right so p1 plus rho1 g a plus h for the left side limb i am writing this equation similarly uh, if we are going this side right this side a second point right which is actually acting in opposite direction so uh, for that i can say uh, rho2 rho2 is the density of manometric liquid right so this is the manometric liquid which is given here so minus rho2 gh can be written there then again i can say rho1 g into a this point this point from here to here this also exerting the liquid so rho1 g into a is equal to p2 or you can you can divide it into left and right limb so for me this is the left limb up to this point a so i can write only these two terms right p1 plus rho1 g a plus h this side left side equal to p2 plus pressure due to this liquid that is rho1 g a plus pressure due to this uh, liquid that is rho2 g into h because our reference line is a to b right so about that we are writing from left side and right side so uh, left side is simple rho1 g and this complete uh, a plus h uh, plus p1 and left right side will be p2 plus this liquid rho1 g a plus rho2 g h and if you equate this i can get the pressure difference between these two point p1 minus p2 which is given as rho2 minus rho1 into gh where rho2 is the density of the manometric uh, fluid which is filled here and uh, rho1 is the density of the fluid which is moving through this pipe to which i am measuring the pressure at uh, two different locations similarly <coughs> if it is a simple container where uh, three different uh, fluids are filled right so fluid 1 fluid 2 and fluid 3 and somebody wants to ask you right what is the total pressure right acting at the bottom of the surface i can easily say a uh, total pressure at the bottom bottom is the point 1 right bottom of the surface i can say p atmospheric because p atmospheric will be acting plus pressure due to fluid 1 plus pressure due to fluid 2 then pressure uh, due to fluid 3 so i can say p atmospheric plus rho1 gh1 plus rho2 gh2 plus rho3 gh3 uh, will be written as pressure at 1 all right so like that we can measure the pressure easily with the help of these kind of manometers so we are having simple manometer differential manometer simple manometer will give the pressure at a single point and differential manometer will give the pressure at two different locations next one is barometer and atmospheric pressure so barometer is a device which measure the atmospheric pressure basically so atmospheric pressure is measured with the help of a device called barometer thus atmospheric pressure is often referred as barometric pressure all right so uh, usually we say uh, the atmospheric pressure will be represented by the rise of mercury by 760 mm right so while mercury will rise by 760 mm in height at 0 degree c right and this standard you know height will be considered as atmospheric pressure so if we convert that height of mercury into the pressure by multiplying with density of mercury which is 13.6 uh, times higher than the density of water so if we multiply rho g into h i can get the absolute pressure right uh, uh, this of atmosphere right so rho g into h if i apply i can get the atmospheric pressure so atmospheric pressure is basically equal to 760 mm of mercury Uh, so this is regarding the pressure now come to the second chapter uh, which is the uh, temperature uh, so how we will sense the temperature so when two bodies of different temperatures are kept together right uh, nearby after some time uh, they will attain the common temperature why because some heat will get transferred from high temperature body to the low temperature body and after 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 a period of time both will have attain the same temperature then we can say the both the bodies now in the state of thermal equilibrium in thermal equilibrium i said when there is no unbalanced uh, temperature gradient exist between the system and between system and its surroundings so these are the two independent systems right which are kept together so a point will reach when there is no temperature difference between these two bodies we then we will say this is in the state of thermal equilibrium so temperature basically is the parameter which uh, uh, distinguishes thermodynamics from any other science of engineering 
So temperature uh, in generally we can say temperature is the degree of hotness or coldness, right? Uh, the person, uh, any person can sense it with the degree of hotness and coldness. So general definition says the temperature defined as the degree of hotness, right? So when two bodies, yeah, that's what I explained. When two bodies are in thermal equilibrium, they will both uh, attain a common, uh, you know, property that is called temperature. So temperature may also be defined as the property that determines whether or not a given system is in thermal equilibrium with another system or not. All right. So uh, then we go to the zeroth law of thermodynamics, right? This is the basic uh, law of thermodynamics. Uh, so all thermometers basically uh, were uh, developed after uh, understanding this law. So zeroth law of thermodynamics basically, uh, if two bodies are in thermal equilibrium with a uh, third body, right? Then uh, if they are in thermal equilibrium with each other. So that means it is trying to say that from this diagram we say, can say, if body A is in thermal equilibrium with B, and also independently in thermal equilibrium with C, then body B and C will also be in thermal equilibrium. Again, I am repeating it. A body A is in thermal equilibrium with, equilibrium with body B and also independently body A is in thermal equilibrium with body C, then body B and C will also be in thermal equilibrium and this law is known as zero the law of thermodynamics very simple so if i replace the third body right the third body that means body c if i am going to replace by a thermometer i can i can find out uh, the temperature of body a and body b so by replacing the third body with a thermometer zeroth law can be restated as two bodies are in thermal equilibrium if both have the same temperature readings even if they are not in contact right this law is the basis of measurement of temperature, hence it is called as zeroth law or law of temperature. Law of temperature. So now come to the temperature scales, right? Basically, all temperature scales are uh, based on some easily reproducible states, and those easily reproducible states are nothing but freezing point and boiling point of water. So freezing point of water is usually we take a take as zero degree and boiling point is around 100 degrees. So there are two easily reproducible state which are required to uh, you know uh, measure the temperature. So with respect to zero, with respect to 100, we usually measure the uh, you know temperature. And these two uh, points are known as fixed points in thermometers. So method used before 1954, uh, we were using these two fixed points to find out the you know uh, temperatures for a particular uh, you know uh, object of particular fluid. So there were two fixed point that is ice point and steep point. What is the ice point? Ice point is the temperature at which pure ice who exists in equilibrium with air saturated water at one atmosphere. A steam point is the temperature at which mixture of pure water and pure steams steam is in equilibrium at one atmospheric pressure. All right. What were the drawback uh, of uh, this method that we were using earlier? There were two uh, main drawbacks uh, with the, these two fixed point. All right. One is the difficulty in achieving the equilibrium between pure ice and air saturated water. Because pure ice cannot come in complete equilibrium with the air saturated water. When pure ice will melt, it will be surrounded by the water itself, right? So air is not going to surround the ice. So it is very difficult to attain the you know equilibrium between uh, you know pure ice and pure water. So the ice point uh, is uh, not actually uh, valid. Similarly, there is a uh, there is second problem with the steam is that steam is very very you know sensitive to the pressure change. If I change the pressure by one bar, my steam temperature will vary by 300 degree Kelvin or, or more than that. So these are the two basically uh, major drawbacks right of using the two fixed method. So instead of having two fixed method, uh, later on a uh, single fixed met point method was invented that is called triple point of water. So method used after 1954, uh, so since 1954 only one fixed point uh, has been used that is called triple point of water. So uh, it is defined uh, as the uh, state at which all the three phases ice, liquid water and water vapor coexist in equilibrium. The temperature at which this happens right this all three phases come in equilibrium is called triple point of water. The temperature is assigned as 273.16 degree Kelvin. Alright so at this temperature all the three phases will be in equilibrium. 
So thermodynamic temperature scales, if we look at uh, the temperature scale that is independent of the property of a substance, is called thermodynamic temperature scale. So temperature scales are of three kind: Kelvin, Rankine, and Celsius scale. So a temperature scale uh, uh, usually be defined. It is it is depend on two fixed point, right? Uh, so easily reproducible state. Uh, they depend. So, if we are talking about ideal gas temperature scale, ideal gas temperature scale is nothing but it is, it is also called as constant uh, uh, temperature scale or you can say the Kelvin scale. So, temperature scale as I said there are four kind of temperature scale Celsius, right, SI and Fahrenheit uh, we used to say in English system, Kelvin again it is the SI system and Rankine that is the English system. So, they, they are the four kind of you know scales that can be used to measure the temperature. So, Celsius scale and Fahrenheit scale basically they were based on the two uh, fixed point freezing point and boiling point or you can say ice point or steam point and thermodynamic temperature scale uh, it is independent on the pro uh, independent of the properties of any substance right. So, basically this uh, thermodynamic temperature scale was derived from the second law of thermodynamics. So, uh, so, the outcome of this is Kelvin scale and Rankine scale. So, uh, this table basically representing the ice point and steam point for uh, five different kind of scales Celsius, Kelvin, Fahrenheit, Rankine and Reumer. Alright, so basically in SI uh, system we use only Celsius and Kelvin and for British system, English system we use the Fahrenheit, Rankine and Reumer. So, corresponding ice point and steam points are uh, given here. So, uh, using uh, the interrelationship between ice point and steam point, right, we can find out the relationship between these uh, five kind of, you know, scales. So, these are the corresponding, you know, uh, comparison of different kind of scales. So, if we want to relate Kelvin with Celsius, right, uh, at the same uh, 0 degree Celsius, right, we can write T of Kelvin is equal to T of degree Celsius plus 273.15. Similarly, temperature of uh, Rankine will be connected with Fahrenheit in by this relation, right? And so, from this relation, we can say the temperature of Rankine is 1.8 times of you know Kelvin, and temperature of Fahrenheit uh, is 1.8 times of degree Celsius plus 32, right? Uh, this is very important uh, relationship. Change in temperature in Kelvin scale is exactly equal to the change in temperature in degree Celsius. Similarly, change in temperature on Rankine scale will be exactly equal to change in temperature of Fahrenheit scale. So, there is no basically difference between these two uh, points. So, the reference uh, temperature in the case of Kelvin scale, usually we were using the ice point earlier that was around 273.15. Uh, now, it has been you know changed by the triple point of barter which is 273.16. So, this is the most uh, precise you know uh, reference point uh, uh, that we are using in current. Uh, this is the temperature at which all the three phases who exist in equilibrium. So, now reference point for absolute uh, temperature scale is triple point of water which is 273.16. Now, come to the thermometer and thermometry. Uh, so, thermometer is a device for measuring the temperature. How will it do? So, thermometer basically uh, it, it requires a body and a certain quantity of that body which, ex which expands and the expansion of that body uh, will be uh, taken as change of uh, temperature. Right. So, if we are considering, uh, we are looking at the simple uh, glass thermometer which is will filled with the manometric fluid, right, that is not a thermometric fluid, usually we use the mercury. So, when that thermometer comes in contact with a, uh, uh, with a body, the mer uh, mercury will expand and the expansion of mercury uh, along the length will measure uh, the temperature. So, along the length of the glass, you know, temperature uh, will be engraved over it and so te different temperature readings can be measured based on the expansion of mercury. So, uh, so the mercury will be called as thermometric uh, property. Uh, so, there are different kind of, you know, thermometers are available that can be used for measuring various kind of, you know, temperature, various range of temperature. So, if we look at the constant volume gas temperature, right, where thermometric property will be pressure because volume cannot change, then only there will be variation pressure. Similarly, constant pressure gas, uh, uh, in that case, volume will be uh, the thermometric property. Alcohol or mercury in glass, then length, along the length, you know, length is going, going to change, that is known as thermometric property. Electric resistance, their resistance will be the thermometric property. If we look at the thermocouple for high temperature measurement, then electromotive force will be called as thermometric property. 
रेडिएशन पायरोमीटर स्पेशली फॉर हाई एंड टेम्परेचर मेजरमेंट देन इंटेंसिटी ऑफ रेडिएशन विल बी कंसिडर एज थर्मोमेट्रिक प्रॉपर्टी सो दीज इंस्ट्रूमेंट मे बी फर्दर क्लासिफाइड इंटू टू ब्रॉड कैटेगरी वन इज कॉल नॉन इलेक्ट्रिकल एंड इज कॉल इलेक्ट्रिकल यू नो मेथड्स ऑफ मेजरिंग टेम्परेचर सो इन नॉन इलेक्ट्रिकल वी कैन यूज एनी थ्री ऑफ दिस मैथड बाई यूजिंग चेंज इन वॉल्यूम ऑफ लिक्विड वन इट टेम्परेचर इज कॉन्स्टेंट एंड बाई यूजिंग चेंज इन प्रेशर वन इट्स टेम्परेचर इज चेंज राइट बाई यूजिंग चेंजेस इन पेपर प्रेशर वन इट्स टेम्परेचर इज चेंज राइट दीज थ्री मैथड्स कैन बी यूज इन नॉन इलेक्ट्रिकल मैथड्स In electrical methods, we can go with thermocouple by change in resistance of material with change in temperature by comparing the colors of filament and object whose temperature is to be found out, and by asserting the energy received by radiation. So, thermometers may be classified as follows: expansion types of thermometer and pressure thermometer. Expansion types is generally thermometer that we are using, that is called liquid and glass thermometer or by metallic uh, thermometers. and uh, pressure thermometer will be vapor pressure thermometer liquid filled thermometer and gas filled thermometer so then high end temperature measurement we use the thermocouple thermometer resistance thermometer radiation pyrometer and optical pyrometers so this uh, first one is called simple you know mercury in glass thermometer if you look at the construction of it it will have a glass tube in that very small perforated you know area will be there where you will be filling the uh, mercury so mercury is filled here and this uh, end will be you know uh, when we are going to measure the temperature we have to touch this end with the body so the moment you know temperature uh, transfer or heat transfer uh, takes place uh, to this tip this mercury will start expanding along this length so along this length you see this temperature readings are engraved over it right so we can directly get uh, you know temperature reading out of it so if my temperature is crossing 60 degree you know around uh, you know uh, maximum it is 600 uh, 600 degrees celsius if it is crossing that then mercury may come out of this glass and will be filled somewhere here this round section is there right uh, tap portion is there where it will get filled so maximum uh, you can measure uh, you know uh, 600 degree c and you know minimum uh, you can go 30 right so between that you can measure the temperature so this is very you know uh, similar type of thermometer mercury or other liquid may be filled right in the glass wall uh, so mercury is the most suitable because uh, you know is melting point is minus 38.9 uh, to about 600 degree c it can sustain so that's why most of the thermometers are using mercury uh, in that and expansion valve as i said this this is provided usually at the top in, in the in the point one 600 degree c has been reached right mercury may expand beyond this you know line then it may get filled in this bulb all right for that purpose we use that and sometimes you know uh, we use the nitrogen also above the mercury right uh, to prevent any kind of boiling of mercury right Bo mercury boiling should not start if the moment is reaching nearby 600 degree c to prevent that we use the nut gas that is nitrogen is filled above the mercury layer second is called bimetallic thermometer bimetallic means it will be using two different kind of metals so one metal will have high thermal expansion and another will have low thermal expansion so the moment it is exposed to the temperature high expanded uh, you know uh, metal will expand and that due to that expansion of metal this coil will rotate so if we look at the you know construction of this kind of thermometer so this bimetallic strips will be you know coiled on a bar or rod and this rod is directly connected to the pointer on the scale so the moment your temperature changes takes place the other uh, layer which is which expands most uh, more compared to the uh, first layer that will expand due to expansion this coil will uh, you know expand uh, and this rod will rotate and due to rotation you know you will get direct reading from the scale how much temperature is there right from the source size directly you can read right so it will have two layers of metals one is high expanded uh, high expand thermal expansion metal another is low uh, thermal expansion uh, metal and that metal will be in uh, in the form of a strip and the strip will be coiled together right around a rod and the rod will be connected to the pointer where we will get the temperature readings thermocouple uh, basically we use for high temperature measurement above 650 degree c we are going to uh, measure the temperature we use the thermocouple so thermocouple is nothing but it is made of two dissimilar metals joined together 
and they form a junction this junction is called hot junction so this junction basically is going to uh, uh, you know uh, touch over the body whose temperature is going to uh, be uh, measured and the other end of it will be placed inside a uh, you know ice and all that is called reference junction this reference junction will be kept inside the ice and due to this temperature difference an emf will be generated right in this wire in this coil this copper uh, coil which will be sensed by the uh, milli voltmeter right uh, accurately it can measure the emf and that emf is uh, you know directly connected to the temperature reading where we can get the temperature all right so uh, due to the cvac effect right in this case we get the you know uh, uh, due to cvac effect because of this temperature difference between hot and uh, cold junction and emf will be generated that emf uh, will be directly sensed by the multi milli voltmeter and over the this panel we can get directly temperature reading so that can be sensed all right so as i said it is made of two dissimilar matter right and uh, one end will be in hot junction another end will be called uh, cold junction so uh, it measure uh, the temperature above 650 degrees c very accurately next one is resistant thermometer in which resistance is my thermometric property right so uh, when uh, uh, temperature changes right due to which there will be change in resistance of that wire and change in resistance will be sensed by again uh, you know uh, your uh, multimeter and multimeter will directly give you the temperature reading temperature reading can be read from the resistance thermometer now come to the international practical temperature scale there is an agreement uh, done uh, in 7th general conference on weight and measure in 1927 right uh, it was decided to uh, use different kind of you know temperature scale for different kind of temperature ranges right it was further uh, revised by in 13th general conference in 1968 and they have given a clear table uh, of different kind of temperature and the thermometer that you can use for that right so if you look at this table the fixed point of international temperature scale 1962 uh, so 1968 triple point of hydrogen is measured here 13.81 kelvin and in degree celsius it is minus 259.34 Similarly, for different kind of you know uh, gases, it is given normal boiling point of hydrogen, right? Neon, oxygen, water. For all the different gases and liquid, uh, your assigned value of temperature is given. So based on this value, uh, the type of you know thermometer you can choose uh, to find out the you know measurement of temperature. So uh, the triple point represents an equilibrium of state between solid, liquid, and vapor phase. Normal boiling point of temperature right uh, at which the substance boils uh, usually will happen at the atmospheric pressure that is called 760 mm of Hg. Normal freezing point is the solidification or melting point temperature of the substance at standard atmospheric pressure. So based on the available method of measurement the whole temperature scale may be divided into four ranges. First range is minus 259.34 to 0 degree Celsius. Right. So it is below your triple point, uh, you know, uh, point, triple point of uh, water. In this case, we'll use the platinum resistance thermometer of a standard design. Uh, and a polynomial of the following form is fitted with the resistance, uh, right, RT and T. We can measure directly the temperature range. So this will be given by this equation. RT is equal to R0 bracket 1 plus AT plus BT square plus ATQ. This is arbitrary, you know, uh, relation where R0 is the resistance at the ice point and uh, R represents the resistance at the, that particular temperature. So this T is the variable here, right? And A, B, C, these are constant, right? Fixed by the instrument, right? So platinum resistance thermometer directly you will touch with the body and this temperature will be sensed. And if that temperature will be kept here, we can directly get the change in resistance due to that temperature. And this change in resistance due to temperature is directly connected to the temperature and we can get the temperature reading from the uh, console of that platinum resistance thermometer and from 0 degree C to 630.74 uh, degree C uh, this uh, range is known as antimony point so it is uh, also based on platinum resistance thermometer here also we can use the diameter of platinum wire will be different right in this case 0 0.05 to 0.2 mm uh, you know diameter wire can be used Second one is uh, third range is 630.74 degrees Celsius to 1064. This is called as gold point, or you can say high temperature, you know, measurement. In that case, uh, basically we have to go for thermocouple. So it is based on a standard platinum versus platinum rhodium thermocouple.
right so thermocouple basically what it will do it will give it will give you the emf so emf is directly you know it will uh, related by this equation ab abt plus ct square abc are constant of this thermocouple and t is the variable so based on that it will give the emf value that emf value is directly related to the temperature and we can get the temperature value out of it right out of it so this these are the basically buyers right so in this case it is a platinum and platinum rhodium sometime it will be copper constant and can also be used right or chromal alumel combination can also be used there are three combination of wires can be used copper constant and chromal alumel or platinum platinum rhodium as uh, last uh, fourth above 1064.43 degrees c if you want to measure right then you have to go for uh, pyrometers right so it is based on the intensity of radiation at temperature t emitted by a black body at a wavelength of uh, lambda so we will use the pyrometer directly get the radiation and using this empirical relation planck equation we can get the temperature out of it right temperature out of it so that's all so these are the different you know uh, uh, range of temperatures to be measured and corresponding you know thermometer which type of thermometers you can use uh, right to measure the temperature so uh, uh, any query here you can post in the comment section uh, i will answer so today i have uh, cover basically the uh, 20% portion of first in first uh, chapter and uh, second chapter thermometer uh, we have uh, covered and zero law of thermodynamics also got covered so uh, different kind of thermometers are present so based on the temperature range ranges you can use right for high temperature uh, you know beyond 600 degrees c if you are going then you have to definitely go for thermocouples and beyond 1000 degrees celsius you have to go for pyrometer which will measure the radiations and up to 600 degrees c even you can use the mercury in glass or platinum resistance thermometers uh, can also be used all right so i am stopping here my presentation so if you are having any doubt you feel free uh, to post in the comment section thank you thank you very much for listening